After listening to this, you will never look at life the same again. Anyone who has ever taken an economics class has heard the phrase, there is no such thing as a free lunch. It means that everything has a cost. Even if that cost is not always immediately apparent. To achieve anything, you must give up something else. In today's happiness-obsessed culture, most pursue just the opposite. Happiness with no costs, all benefits. We want the rewards without the risks, the gain without the pain. But ironically, it is this unwillingness to sacrifice anything, to give up anything, that makes us more miserable. As with anything else, Happiness has costs. It's not free. And despite what CoverGirl or Tony Robbins or the Dalai Lama once told you, it's not always easy breezy either. Number one, you must accept imperfection and flaws. Many people believe that if they just collect a house, a spouse, a car, and 2.5 children, everything will be perfect. Life has a checklist. Problems don't go away. They change and evolve. And the quicker we accept that the point of life is progress and not perfection, the sooner we can all order a pizza and go home. Perfection is an idolization. It's something that is approached, but never reached. Whatever your conception of perfect is in your pretty little head, it is, in itself, an imperfect concept. There is no perfect. There is only what you wish in your head. We don't get to decide what perfection is. We don't know. All we can know is what is better or worse than what is now. And even then, we're often wrong. When we let go of our concept of what is perfect and what should be, we relieve ourselves of the stress and frustration of living up to some arbitrary standard. And usually, this standard isn't even ours. It's a standard we adopted from other people. Accepting imperfection is hard. because it forces us to accept that we have to live with things we don't like. Number two, you must take responsibility for your problems. Blaming the world for our problems is the easy way out. It's tempting and it can even be satisfying. We're the victims and we get to be all emo and indignant at all the terrible injustices that have just been inflicted upon us. We wallow in our imagined victimhood so as to make ourselves feel unique and special in ways we never get to feel unique and special anywhere else. But our problems are not unique. And in ourselves, we are not all that special. The beauty of accepting the imperfection of your own knowledge is that you can no longer be certain that you're not to blame for your own problems. Are you really late because of traffic? Or could you have left earlier? Is it really the incompetence of your manager that lost you your promotion? Or was there something more you could have done? The truth is usually somewhere around both, although it varies from situation to situation. The point is that you can only fix your own imperfections and not the imperfections of others. So you may as well get to work on them. Blaming others for the problems in your life may give you a smidgen of short-term relief. But ultimately, it implies something entirely insidious, that you are incapable of controlling your own fate. 
And that's the most depressing assumption of all to live with. Number three, you must feel the fear and do it anyway. Bravery is not the absence of fear. Bravery is feeling the fear, the doubt, the insecurity, and deciding that something else is more important. If we identify with our moment-to-moment -moment emotional states and sensitivities, our happiness will surge and crash like a deregulated Wall Street derivatives orgy. For those of you who don't know anything about Wall Street, that's really bad. We want sturdy, resilient happiness, not derivatives orgies. True, long-lasting, kid-tested, and mother-approved happiness is not derived from our immediate emotional states. Being constantly greedy is not only impossible, but it would be unbearably annoying, but rather is derived from the deeper values we define for ourselves. Our ultimate life satisfaction is not defined by what we do and what happens to us, but why we do what we do and why it happens to us. Number four, you must find a deeper purpose to your actions. A better way of saying this is you must choose what is motivating you. Is it something superficial or external or something deeper and more meaningful? Being motivated by money for the sake of money leads to unstable emotional regulation and a lot of obnoxious and superficial behavior. Being motivated by money so that one can provide a good life for their family and children is a much sturdier foundation to work with. That deeper purpose will motivate one through the stress and fear and inevitable complications that a more superficial motivation would not. Being motivated by the approval of others leads to needy and unattractive behavior. Being motivated by the approval of others because you're an artist and you would want to construct art that moves and inspires people in new and powerful ways is far more sustainable and noble. You'll be able to work through disapproval, embarrassments, and the occasional disaster. How does one find their deeper purpose? Well, it's not easy. But then again, robust and resilient lifelong happiness isn't easy either. But here's a hint. It has something to do with growth and contribution. Growth means finding a way to make yourself a better person. Contribution means finding a way to make other people better. Look for ways that can integrate those into your motivations. There's nothing wrong with sex, money, and rock and roll. Hey, preaching to the choir here. But the sex needs to be motivated by something deeper than sex. The money needs to be motivated by a value more sustainable than simply money. And the rock and roll needs to just rock. Find a way to slide growth and or contribution under them and bam, you get the best of both worlds. Number five, you must be willing to fail and be embarrassed. The beautiful thing about humanity is the diversity of life values. When you live out your values and let them motivate your actions and behaviors, you will inevitably clash with those whose values contradict your own. These people will not like you. They will leave nasty, anonymous comments on the internet and make inappropriate remarks about your mother. Anything you do that's important will inevitably be accompanied by those who wish for you to fail not necessarily because they're bad people, but most likely because their values differ from yours. Haters gonna hate. In any venture, failure is required to make progress. And progress, by definition, is what drives happiness. The progress of ourselves, the progress of others, 
the progress of our values and what we care about. Without failure, there is no progress. And without progress, there is not happiness. The most important skill in life is not how you avoid getting knocked down, but rather learning how to stand back up. Haters gonna hate.